Sairam, just to recollect what we were discussing last week, uh, we had just started the study of Satisai Vahini of Swami, and um, he's talking about the purpose of our life, the Paramartha, the supreme goal of human life is attainment of the Atman. And um, his Swami spoke about the pramanas, the proofs which will allow us to have the knowledge and also reach the goal. Vedas, Smritis, other Shastras and also the experience of an ascetic who has realized it. So these are proofs which people have used. And then Swami also goes on to say that Creation and the Creator are without beginning and be without an end. And uh, this truth and the dharmas which are also created by the Lord are ever present. They were existing before human beings came to know of them. And even when they forget, the Vedas and the dharmas will remain thereafter too. So those were some of the concepts which we discussed. And also that uh, human life is rare. And that's the supreme, the highest state of evolution. And um, so we should make use of it. I think these are some of the topics which we discussed. So I'll ask the sisters to continue from where we left off. Sairam, sisters. Sairam. Of course, a few may argue that Though it may be conceded that the Dharma relating to the Supreme Goal has no ending, surely it must have had a beginning. The Vedas declare that the cycle of creation, dissolution, has no point where it begins and no point where it ends. It is a continuous wheel and there is no change in the quantum of cosmic energy, either increase or decrease. It is ever the same ever established in itself. The created and the creator are two parallel lines with their beginnings unknown and their ends incomprehensible. They are moving at equal distances from each other forever and ever. Though God is ever active, his will and the power behind it are not clear to the human intellect. The Supreme, according to the inheritors of Indian Bharatiya culture, is, va it is vastness itself. It arises to the high skies and roams free in that expanse. It was declared in clear terms long prior to the historical period. The study of the concept of the Supreme and the propagation of its concept suffered serious setbacks in the course of history but it has confronted each of these setbacks with success and is today asserting itself alive and alert. This is proof of the innate strength of the revelation. Okay, thank you, sister. So I think we read this in Telugu yeah. as well last week. So I will open it up for anyone who would like to comment or discuss any of the points. And I think I remember vaguely that Sakuanti had a question uh, which she said that she will ask today. So I don't know whether she still has the question or not. Um, anyone else who would like to share any thoughts or comments, please go ahead. Sairam, um, the, the entity that Swami is referring to in that last piece where it's saying, you know, passing all obstacles, it's even now as a living entity, it is existing. 
Uh, is that re relating to Brahman? Um, so I, I don't know, I will go first, I guess. I think my understanding is that whatever has been declared by the Vedas, so it includes everything, the Dharma, I think Swami is talking about Dharma, which was present before human beings came to know of it. And they also will last after the human beings. So that's what Swami spoke, speaking about at this point in time is my understanding. Um, so I will stop there. Anyone else would like to? Sai Ram. So Kalyani, the, sorry, auntie, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, please, please. No, because Kalyani, the question is the study of the concept of the Supreme and the propagation of this concept suffered serious setbacks in the course of history. So, I would like to read from the Telugu so that it is very clear to everyone again. Please, It is by the can you can you uh, translate Arun? so the, the the supreme goal of the bharatiyas is it's beyond an end and it expands beyond an beyond the end that means it's limitlessly it is expansive mahonnata gagana margamuna kegesi achata swechchaga viharinchunnadi it has risen up to the skies and it moves around independent of everything it, this is prehistoric time itself. It has become established and established. For this, there have been many obstacles or uh, uh, setbacks. Setbacks, setbacks. That, that's what she is she's asking. Yeah. So it's it has won over those setbacks or and it has it remains alive even today. This innate strength of it yeah. is a proof of its existence. So in, in between now and then, um, the, the Swami is talking about a few other religions, Yudas, that means Jewish, Christian, Christian and Zoroastrian, such religious uh, thoughts, it, uh, it became uh, embedded in this also, even then. Lele. This Kristava is either... Nanalo Vilina Monarchuna. So when, when they tried to Im uh, uh, infiltrate, let me put it this way. Infiltrate. When they tried to infiltrate this thought process. Mm, yeah. Sarva Vijay Shila Mugui Bharati Paramartha Vahini. This uh, param the river of this supreme goal, uh, which is... Uh, all it's victorious. Tana Janma Buminundi Veru Kaka. Not being uprooted from its birthplace. Pai Mata Paramartha Munaku. The other religious supreme goals to them. Artha Munabodinchi. It taught them the real meaning. Anniti Yoka Yekatva Munu Prakatinchi. Showing the union, oneness of all of all of these, it established the equality. So some of the things which Swami has written in Telugu has not been transferred. In Telugu. No, it has not been read, Dante. I think it's it's. Uh, did I did I not read this one? No, Last you time. we did not read this, Dante. Ah, that's correct. That's correct. In English also, it was it's not read. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The setbacks. Clearly yeah, Swami's story. These are the setbacks because these other religions tried to infiltrate. infiltrate oh, that's the way I can put it. They yeah. tried to dilute the thought of Sanatana. But what it did was it um, not only won over those atoms, 
it also proved to the others the, their own meaning, the meaning of their own goals, and mm -hmm. also proved the equality and oneness of all faiths. Yeah. That is the strength of Sanatana Dharma as Swami assist. The other religions wanted to take over Hinduism, right. our culture, in those so, yeah. but, it, it, but because of its natural innate strength of this, our culture, it has stood. It has stood the test and it is now successfully actually alive, alive even today. Alive. So that entity, that living entity that's still alive is referring to the teachings of uh, the Vedas and Sanatana. Yes. yes. The philosophy which teaches us Paramartha and the Vedas about the Vedas. Right. Sai Ram, I have a question. Yes. Um, you, you know, the created and the creator are two parallel lines, right? Yes. So they're moving at equal distance from each other. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the only time for uh, when the creation gets liberation or moksha, then the par lines intersect? So, okay, good question. Anyone would like to answer? I think some of this uh, we have discussed before also in the Gita Vahini also. Uh, if anyone would like to comment or share your thoughts, please. Okay, so Sairam Sugi, so no one is volunteering, so I think I will volunteer until others make up their mind. See, the thing is, the creation is actually part of the creator. It's considered the vesture of the creator. Okay. The thing is, the creation is only a temporary phenomenon which is perceived by us. So because it is something which is always around the Lord. Okay. It is not, though it is also, the Lord is present there also. The distance is actually, um, even though, you know, we think it's parallel, it's somewhere far is actually intimately connected to the creator. So the thing is, there is the point of intersection means it is not a separate entity for it to intersect. Um, like It's like, you know, um, I think the thing which can come to me is, you know, if we are walk, you are walking around, the shadow will actually move with you at the same distance. It may sometimes look as if it's very long. Sometimes it may look as if it's very short. But sometimes it will just come under your feet when the sun is above. Uh, so, but do does the person and the uh, shadow intersect is the question. The thing is, it is linked to the person, but not necessarily there's an intersection person. That's my understanding. Because in the Gita Vani, one is called the Swarupa, the other one is called the Swabhava. Um, I think if uh, I will stop here, others can. I think Staruna has her hand up, so I will ask her to speak. Sairam, brother. Yes, uh, that's uh, that's the thing. Um, I know the creation is within the creator, as you have mentioned. But I also trying to understand intersect means there is no intersection because it's within. But why Swami used this parallel? That also is my question. Why it was used to that? Uh, is that is in the, the Telangu too? Yeah, it is in uh, in the Telugu. Oh, then I think we can read uh, Auntie, you can see you know, some, you. Samudhu, Samudhu Ramandu. Mm, yeah, Samana Rekulu. Mm. Samana Rekulu, Samadhu So yes. they are equidistant parallel lines which exist forever. Okay. Um, so that's that's what I was so saying. does it parallel line something? There is supposed to be a meaning there, <clears> right? <throat> Even though it's within, then then there's if it's within, there's no parallel line. But Swami may be referring something for us to understand there, right? I'm I'm just thinking to myself. Okay, um, good question, uh, sister. I will brother Thasan will be able to give some uh, answer. Sairam, brother. So I, I agree to your point because uh, the 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 creator is there. We know that one. So when the creator is there, so creation always there. There is no end. 
for our uh, mind or our knowledge, we cannot uh, uh, justify when that uh, creation is going to stop. It's always there. That's what Swami uh, mentioning in this chapter. Thank you. Okay, brother. Thank you very much. Auntie Saku. I think you had to you had to speak, you had to unmute and speak, Auntie. This is about uh, the Vedas declare that the cycle of creation and dissolution, there's no end and no beginning. It is a continuous being. Can you explain the it is a continuous being? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, anyone would like to? Yeah, Sairamant. Sairamant, please go ahead. Creation and dissolution, sustenance and dissolution, they they are in, going on in circle. As we know, when Srutti takes place, for some time it exists, and then after it has to go to Pralaya. This state, these three states are not, are not in parallel lines. They are in cyclic lines. It's like a wheel. After pralaya again sutti, sutti uh, again sustenance, pralaya again sutti. Like that, it goes in a wheel. It goes in continuously in a cyclic motion. Uh, I think, I think I, that that's the meaning here. I hope, Saira. Okay. Thank you, Aunt. Thank you. Can yes, I can yes, I sir. ask you? <coughs> yes. Go ahead, Aunt. Yeah. Um. Since it is a uh, Continuous wheel, so the Kala, the four yugas also will go up now. Kali Yuga, then Kali Yuga will go to Satya Yuga, definitely. Treta Yuga, Tuabara Yuga, Kali Yuga, right? Yes, sir. That will continue. So yes. I am asking in Treta Yuga, Rama came, Tuabara Yuga, Krishna came. So these things will also will happen. Over and over again. <laughs> yes. Yes, Santi. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Swami has spoken about it. You know, you see, the avatars took place in different, uh, you know, because you see, Yuga is only one, you know, Chatur Yuga we are looking at. But if you look at the Manvantara, you know, there are many Chatur Yugas. In each of the Chatur Yuga, the same thing happens again and again. So, same avatars also will take place. Oh. Uh, so, so, many Krishnas, many Ramas. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, the thing is, this parallel thing is, see, Swami is trying to explain to us the, the two concepts of Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha is the, what Swami says as the creator. Prakriti is what he does. <laughs> Prakriti is his creation. So, as soon as this Purusha and Prakriti always exist in this world. The Purusha underlies and the Prakriti is above. So this this continues as long as, uh, you know, as long as much as we can imagine. There's no beginning, no end. We can we can ever imagine. There's always the creator and there's always the creation. Uh, because this is what is also depicted as Ardhanarishwara in Shiva and Shakti. Sairam. Yeah, yeah, Sairam. I think Narmada, yeah. you should go because you had already put your hand. No, it's all okay, Auntie. I uh, know, and uh, uh, I just explained because I was going back to the question of uh, the parallel lines and uh, uh, Purusha and the Prakriti. So, uh, where Anna said, you know, um, you know, we understand so the creation is within the creator, right? So, we are one. So. I was thinking of you know the fast moving train and if we are within, so we are also moving at the same speed, parallel kind of understanding. So in that sense, uh, going back to the question of merging with the Lord or the, the, the concept or the word, you know, how we say that. So how does that play a role here if the creation is within the creator? I know we talked about it, but I, I, I got confused again. So if, if um, you could explain, Anna. Because if we are within the creator, so what is it meant by merging with the Lord or 
uh, I think that was kind of the question um, I asked earlier. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, how uh, how is the intercept working? Yeah, sorry. So the thing is, I think I didn't turn on my camera. So the thing is, um, see the merger. Generally, as soon as we say merger, we think something physically merging. Okay, that's what we are capable of cognizing. But in the spiritual parlance, it is the identification of one with the divine is the merger. So, for example, a person that we call Jeevan Mukti, even when a person is alive, the person at the spirit, spirit level feels identification with the divine. So, the, this, that is what merges. The body will not uh, dissolve into something, you know, which is what we, uh, that's what we expect. See, the body is only composed of the five elements. The five elements will go back to the original state. Because the original state of five elements is also God. That is creation. The entire creation is nothing but the permutation and combination of the five elements. Okay, the five elements go back to their original state. But in terms of that merger for a Jivatma is identification with the Paramatma. Feeling connected. Okay, because it's Swami says you are anyway connected but you don't know it because of ignorance. So that's why they also use the word realization. Realizing that I am divine. Swami so, mean, says, come to the realization, come to know that you are divine, which you are. But only thing is ignorance is blocking you from knowing that. And as soon as you know that, that state is called merger. So that means at that point in time, you don't feel that you're separate. You don't feel anything is separate in this world. Uh, so uh, that's my understanding. I will stop here. Uh, Sister Aruna has a hand up. So, yes, Sister Aruna. Asairam, brother, uh, is it we can take it that parallel means it always remains? Yes. So that means it goes with the parallel because when the creator is there, creation is there, it always remains. It's as Swami has mentioned as parallel, right? Yes. Okay, Sorry. okay, great. Thank you. Sorry. 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 In, fact, right. in fact, it is in Telugu what Swami, they, because we, like, we have got an idea about parallel yes. lines, when two lines are drawn beside one another. That's not it. Swami here says, Yes. Sustiyo, yes. Sushti Kartayo, Rendu, Samana Rekamulu. Yes, that's the thing. Samana yeah. Rekamulu. They, mm -hmm. they are equal. They are equal. Yes. Samana Rekamulu can be taken. Isn't it, Arun? Yes, Andy, very true. Very yeah. true. Uh, it's it's sometimes, nice. because yeah. some of these uh, concepts, there is no proper language to come. Right. Yes, that's the thing. The parallel, we always say, is the two lines going on. A, but, then, yeah, it's that, a remaining thing only they have uh, translated into parallel. Yeah. Yes, thank Good. you, Andy. Thanks for the clarification. The other, the other sister who was asking, when are they going to intercept? <laughs> that's that because of, we, we have taken two lines drawn together line, line side by line they are going to merge one one I, I, actually Arun uh, explained it merger there is no merger as such because we are in ignorance we are giving importance to our deha we are body import, bodily importance when we realize that we are one with the identify, identify ourselves with that Brahman the, the, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much we, in other words, we are already within. We within. are already merged. That's what. That's Very nice. Thank you so much, Auntie. Thank you, brother. And one more thing we can also say. When Prakriti and Purusha Swami is explaining, Purusha is the creator. Prakriti is his power, Maya. It's Maya. It is not separate from him. It is his strength. It is his power, which, is, which exists in him. So there is no question of separate lines or anything like that. They are together. And the moment that one realizes that I am not this body, I am I identifying myself with that Brahman, then, you know, the question of two lines. Samana <laughs> Rekamulu. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie. Thanks for the clarification. Because yeah. sometimes in our attempt to translate, we can, you know, just go off the mark, tangent yeah. line, yeah. not yeah. parallel. The whole thing was confused. 
They exist parallelly, you can say, but you know, it's not two lines drawn. Yeah. You know? And yeah, you can say this one also according to when uh, Purusha is the substratum, the yes. creation is superimposed upon him. The whole universe creation is just a superimposition. And the basic fundamental substratum is that Lord. Okay, thank you, Auntie. Yes, Auntie. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Uh, that's why Swami says, until the creator is there, creation will be there. Then there's no end uh, yeah. beginning. Yeah. So that's a, no end or beginning is a parallel, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> yes, Auntie Saku, please go ahead. Yes, Sairam. Um, merger means uh, the Atma is merged with the knowing that it is, it is also a spark of Brahman, God. Yes. Yes. But what do you mean by um, merging with ba God means at that time your Atma has to uh, be very pure, right? Pure and more divine so that actual merger will happen. Is that so? Yeah. So I think the word Swami has used, Santi, is that the fire can only merge with fire. Water can only with water. Yeah, they have to be the so, same. So you have to become divine before you can merge with the Lord. Yeah, that that is important. Yeah. Swami has mentioned that yeah, that's based on knowing is the first step, but getting to that state is with our sadhana and everything. We have to reach that state, right? Yes, Santi. Thank that you. Understanding, but anyone has. Others also can share their thoughts. I will go to Kalyani who has her hand up. Yes, sorry, I'm uncle. I, I think you had asked a question like, uh, what is it that merges? Uh, so it's not the body. So is it is it like your mind or buddhi or ahankara? It's, it's my mind is also <laughs> it's as, as good as the body. Uh, the Atman is beyond that. Only that can merge. The, it is not even, in, it's inconceivable even by the mind. The merger as a concept is inconceivable even by, by the mind, is my understanding. So it is the Atman which actually has to realize. So then you can ask, you know, without the mind, how will I know? I think that's the question. Because we are all so used to using the mind that we don't know, we don't even, we are not even aware that we are, the awareness actually is part of us. Awareness does not depend on the mind. Uh, but the mind may allow us to ex externally experience it, is my understanding. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Anyone else would like to come? Uh, Sai Ramanti, go ahead. It is the Jeevatma which merges with the Paramatma. Its merger is nothing but Jeevatma independently thinks that it is apart from the word Atma. When Jeeva realizes, that I am not a part, I am not different, I am that part, I am, I am one with that Brahman, with Atman. Then the merger, the question of merging is here, the, only the identification, that's all. Sairam. Thank you, Aunt. So there's a question, I think, posed by a sister, hmm. one of the sisters. She asked, you know, when people pass away, we say the person has merged with the God. Mm -hmm. and I, what are the thoughts based on what we are discussing? How how to interpret this? Thoughts. How to understand this? I think her question. I will open this up to others to share their thoughts. Is it that like if you no longer identify as an individual, like you just merge on every level, like your physical body merges with the whole physical universe that you just consider it? all of that as you is one thing and similarly like on all different levels of your existence. So Kalyan, you, can you repeat? You're saying, is it merger at all levels of your consciousness is the question you ask? Right. Like, so See, you no longer identify your body as just this one body, but the whole, all the whole physical world is, uh, is you. So I think, uh, so let me rephrase it the way I understand. 
I hope. So I think Kalyan is asking, does that merger involve identification of all the physical world as one extension of oneself? I think is one of the things she asked. Uh, is it that that level also? Is there an awareness of that kind? Uh, am I right, Kalyani? Yes. Okay. So anyone who would like to share your thoughts on that also, please go ahead. So yes. I yeah, yeah. So I, I may be posting a question, not literally answering, but um, just to understand the um, question when Kalyani asked, you know, if, if, if merger is um, uh, realizing at every level, right? So, so if 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 um, so if that's the sense I, that's when you realize that you are part of the Lord, then you're already is when you're merging. That's what uh, we initially said, right? So until that soul realizes, or until that Atma realizes uh, and has merging, if, you, if there are some sort of attachment or if there are any lingering connections, I don't think you are merging, although you are within the creation. Maybe I'm not making any sense. I'm posing a question here. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nirmala. Sai, Sai, yeah. brother. Um, you know the question. My understanding. I don't okay. know if, if we, uh, we did discuss about Atma. What happened when somebody passes away to that Atma? And in my little knowledge and um, remembrances, as as Sister Nirmala said, of course, based on your last desire where you are, it re birth and then. You know, it finds a body. And there was a question I think I posed, how long does it stay there that it finds a body? There is no timeline. It's just, you know, whenever, based on your karmas, past karmas, that Atma is looking or has to go in a body which pick, which basically suits or I don't know if I'm, I'm using the right word. But the merging with our Supreme Lord is is a is a different level as you said you can merge with him while you are living consciously you know people might not but you merge and from Gita Vahini what I learn is merger is when you operate from the sense of Atma that I am doing because I'm this Atma or from the sense of Nishkam Karma I'm doing nothing this is all his so those are the two things that's that's what I thought is is kind of real merging because you're operating from either or but Merging with God after you die, after you die is it depends on where you are on your level, a spiritual level, or the next birth you have to take, or you are just merging like, like Mirabai or Sainam. So. Thank you, sister. Um, I think so. I think what the question is people make statements that somebody has merged with God. I think that's uh, that's what everyone wishes, I would say, it's not necessarily. That is the reality. Because that the reality is only known to the Lord. Okay. Um, so, but as Sister Shivani has said, actual merger, the Jeevan Mukti has to be there. So, if at all, uh, for a person for the person to merge, even after the fact, because he has already merged, the physical may disappear, is my understanding also, based on our because we had discussed that as part of Gita Vahini. Um, so uh, we will, I think, Kalyani, so there are two questions remaining, I think. Um, one is Sister Kalyani's question, how do we how do we deal with the extension of body when we have that merger? Is it at all levels of consciousness? And I think Narmada, Sister Narmada tried to answer and she asked a question also. <laughs> uh, she answered, but then she was not so sure, I think. Um, so I will ask uh, Brother Thasan, you go ahead, Brother. Yeah. Time. So, Sairam, brother, so whatever you say, merge with the God, only uh, known to the God. So, we are doing our part, either bhakti or uh, jnana or karma. So, karma was our body. Uh, the Swami says, karma chetra was given to you, you for to merge or for your liberation. You do your duty and only Lord knows. When is the suitable time come? He is the only one knows, even I didn't know. 
even the person not going to know. So you have to work on that one. Even Lord Krishna said, everyone has to merge one day. So it's all depend on your uh, uh, path. So leave the path. You do your, you walk on the path, leave it to the Lord. That nobody cannot say, I, uh, this person merged with the Lord or anything. Only he knows. Thank you, Brother Sairam. Thank you, Brother Sairam Sai Satish. Sairam, just uh, adding uh, to the discussion. So I think uh, uh, when we say merger or moksha, it is uh, uh, to what extent the merger has happened in the sense there is nothing left to emerge. If there is nothing left to emerge, then the merger is complete. And uh, uh, of course, we have stula, sukshma, and karana, sharira, not even touching the mahakarana. But uh, if the merger is happening just at the stula and possibly uh, at the sukshma, then there is always a coming back uh, because uh, if it's just the body, it's going back to the five elements and the mind in its essence continues to exist in some form being a bundle of desires, then the merger with the absolute is not complete. And so the emerging happens and it stays um, to go on to take another form of creation till the dissolution is complete. So I think when absolute dissolution happens with nothing to emerge, then we know it is a complete merger or moksha. Uh, uh, with regard to uh, Sister Kalyani's question on the extension of the physical part that I didn't get, Tana, can you just elaborate on that question again? Uh, maybe I, I'm... I'm thinking I got it, but yeah, I just want to be sure yeah. before I answer. I think Kalyani's question was, when we feel merged and we have identified with the Atma, Paramatma, do we have that experience at all levels of consciousness? So that means, yeah. will we expect our, the physical bodies of everything also as ours? Or as one? Will that be an experience? I think that's a question. At the mental level, also, do we feel that all thoughts of everyone is one? Uh, so, you know, at all levels of our consciousness, do we feel one when we merge with the Lord? I think that's the question. If my question, I have not phrased it, uh, she will uh, let you know. But uh, as far as I'm, my but, understanding, that's what No, you have phrased it very correctly. Is it the merger at the physical level, mental level, intellectual level? I think she means only these levels. Yes. Are we merging completely? Physically, of course, when we get dissolution, it goes to goes back to the five elements because our body is made up of five elements. It goes back. And then the sukshma sarira are the mental uh, and pra pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, uh, vignanamaya kosha. All these things, things sukshma sarira, they are uh, subtle body. The subtle body moves after the death of the body it goes most into the other uh, body. And uh, the karana level, uh, I don't know what happens at karana level. So I think her question is, Auntie, mm. when we die, it's a different matter. Mm. But we are alive, when we are Jeevan Mukta, how will a Jeevan Mukta experience the physical? You know, will, will that person experience everything as an extension of him? Uh, you know, when we, are, when we have not reached that, we think our body is our body, you know? But so once we identify with the ultimate supreme Lord who is everywhere, how will we see the other bodies in this world? Our own body and our other bodies, how will that experience be? I think that's the question. I think I have come across uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti saying when he got, he was supposed to be a realized soul. He could see himself everywhere in the world. He could see Jiddu Krishnamurti here every, everywhere. Uh, so maybe... Uh, at that realized stage, it depends upon the Jivan Mukta stage, how he is able to um, um, face the face the world, whether he is physically present in everything when he starts seeing it, or mentally is he merging with everybody's mind. He can he could control the mind or he can read the mind of others. So such things come. Um, 
is it uh, is it co the correct way of uh, explaining it? Okay, I think it's one view, Auntie. But we'll ask what others are saying. Yeah. Yes, Sister Aruna. Brother Sairam, we already learned that merger uh, is only take place while we are uh, while we are living. Yes. Not at the time of uh, death. Death is for the body only. So, um, if you will feel um, if you are merged, then you will feel that everything is an extension of God and within you. So that's how I think. Okay. okay thank, thank you, you Sairam. Yes, yes, yes. Sairam, small correction. Not only Jivan Mukti, there is Krama yes. Mukti also. After the death of the body also, Mukti can take place in different stages. They go to Satya Loka, then they go to Brahma Loka. Like that, the, the, there, is, there is Mukti even after death also. Body may not, but that soul, that uh, Jiva, which travels through all the things, it, it also gets Mukti. In it, in the different stages it, it attains. It's not that it doesn't, only Jeevan Mukta will attain Mukti only while he's living. It's not that true. But according to the Gita Vahini, Auntie, isn't it Krishna saying, when you say the last minute, you say, if you remember the Lord, you will merge with me. So that point of time comes, you, you if you live like that kind of life only, you may thinking the Lord at the time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, that is that is kind of says that if you you already uh, um, you reach that level to see everywhere the Lord, that is a merger in your mind. You know, we don't talk about um, much in the merger side of the body, right? Or always atma. So the dying part, um, saying with the uh, saying, uh, he's merged with the thing that has um. But the mentioned, it's only Lord knows. But as a person to realize on the every level of consciousness, that comes while they are living itself. Thank you, Saira. That's my understanding. Thank you, Auntie. Saira, Saira. Arun, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, Saira, Saira. Yes, Sai Satish, please go ahead. So, um, I was just trying to use that same analogy which Swami tells about that uh, um, they move from the stage of the light is in me, I am in the light, and I and the light are one, in terms of how the person is traversing in their understanding of finding the divinity within to finding the divinity without, and then realizing that everywhere it is divinity, um, in terms of how uh, we perceive, we perceive of a sadhaka who is en route to achieving that, which um, ultimately comes down to, uh, like, if, if we see an uh, autobiography of a yogi, uh, uh, when um, Swami Paramahamsa Yogananda finds something of an experience from his guru, or when Ramakrishna Paramahamsa touches Vivekananda on his chest, then the perception is that the the body that en that encompasses the individuality drops and they feel there is no beginning and no end of themselves so they so it is basically the physical dimensions of this body that defines that i am separate from something else but when that dimension drops then it is absolute continuum so in terms of perception there is no beginning and no end at whether it is the physical level, uh, yeah, physical level, still the dimensions continue to exist at the body level, but the mind now in, in the vistas that is open, that is beyond the mind, they just see it as one continuum. So at the level of the body, the body may still continue to, this is for a Jeevan Mukta where the body continues to exist in its, um, in its physicality. The mind is tending towards being amanaska or to a level of thoughtless stage but still in their perception the world still exists and and but it exists at a level of it being only fleeting in nature so it is more like the the 
if you have to define yeah it, it yeah it is again the same thing though if we put in words we be, we it is difficult to describe something that is beyond the canon understanding of the mind and the words so ne nevertheless the 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 merger they say that the body drops like a leaf in 25 day 21 days from the time that is that experience comes into place so physicality if you are talking about that existence physicality of the body exists the mind is in a state of dissolution the body anyway will dissolve because it cannot contain that kind of a force uh, and looking beyond everything becomes a ceaseless continuum that that is what yeah maybe i'll stop here that is that is the few of the things that i have read here and there which i yeah maybe right i don't know. okay thank you sai sadish thank you yes sister shivani Sorry, I was looking for my mute button. Um, yes. Since we are talking about this merger, just I think it might be a little off topic, but if it takes long, we can talk some other time. You know, we had a study circle at the center and we were talking about parents, what Swami has said, why you should have parents' picture, your deceased parents' picture in the house and all of those things. And there was a, there was a comment that whenever ancestors they pass away they are still looking upon us or taking care of us i was a little uncomfortable i couldn't kind of you know continue because we had limited time is this true because when we're talking atma when sister, we are talking all yes sorry sister we can only study what swami says what anyone imagines cannot be studied awesome so, awesome okay so, yeah. Because sometimes in the name of statistical, people just, uh, you know, just whatever they think, people come and share and it confuses everyone. It is, okay. uh, I don't think it is advisable to do that kind of study circle. Perfect. So, okay. What Swami has read, said, and we can try to understand in that context. Mm. That's my personal view. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, sure. Thank you, Sai. Um, yes, Auntie Saku. Sai Ram. In last chapter of uh, Bhagavad uh, Gita Vahini, we learned that moksha, while you are living, uh, moksha is moha, you remove your moha, that is uh, desires, all the desires, and you become, you have to become to kaivalya ananda, eternal ananda. When you become eternal ananda, you, we discussed that uh, you don't feel hungry. You don't crave for food. You don't look for anything. You just exist. In that stage, you are really merging with God. In their mind might work a little bit, but their spiritual uh, soul, consciousness, is ready to merge with the super consciousness. This is what I think is merging, the final merging. Thank you. I don't know whether I am right, but I look go by the chapter 27, Gita Vahini. Thank you very much, Anti. Thanks for recollecting. What You're you welcome. Read. Okay, Sai. Um, maybe I will also add uh, my, it's, uh, some, uh, some things which Swami has said. See, one of the things I rem uh, clearly remember Swami saying is, when one identifies with the Atma as present everywhere in this world, any suffering in any part of the world will be felt by us. Swami says it's like if a needle pricks our uh, foot, a toe in our foot, we will feel the pain. So a person who has identified with the Brahman, will feel the pain, physical pain, anywhere in, in this world. Not only his own the body in which he may be present, all the pain as his own pain. He will feel a sympathetic you know, suffering at the physical level. I think that applies to the mental level also. Uh, I think, uh, so that person will identify, will not have something called my own body. My body, that concept will leave. I think the identification with the body has to go 
identification with the mind has to go and then only the atman we can merge uh, it's like uh, if you want to swim you have to take your clothes off and then swim like the mind it has to go the body has to go after that any body is seen as body which is part of creation i think that's the way another thing which i am reminded of is the hanuman saying deha buddhya dasoham atma buddhya tvadam shaka um, okay so what he says is when i think i am the body when i think with the body i become your servant i so everyone is a servant of the lord then i think you know every every body you see is serving the lord at the mental level i think i am part of you and at the atmic level i tomevaham you and i are one i think that's my experience that's what hanuman says so we can say he is a jeevan mukta and that's what he has said um yeah. so i think i will stop here um so you know, physical body has not become one we will identify with the pain of every single physical being in this world as our own pain i think that's real sai ramanti please Sairam. go ahead jeeva buddhya dasoham sorry uh, deha buddhya deha buddhya dasoham jeeva buddhya tadam uh, shakha tadam cha amsham then atma buddhya i am you are uh, i am one with you i am i am i and you are one yes tameva uh, so i think so in a, in a physical sense the person will not identify something as one, its own body and some other body as somebody else's body i don't think i think that's my understanding i will stop there uh, brother dasan please go ahead the yes, sairam brother we are talk we are thinking about our atma sometime with the body and the mind if we take atma we can say whatever we are is happening it doesn't affect the atma the reason uh, one of the example i can say in the birds fly it doesn't you don't see any trace same thing it doesn't have it doesn't affect the atma if you want to merge with the paramatma you have to change like his quality the six quality whatever we study it once you reach to that level you going to merge whatever you said water going to merge with the water fire will merge with the fire so if you want to merge with the lord you have to attain that six quality with the paramatma then you will merge that also only lord knows with the grace thank you saira saira brother thank you thank you yes kalyani please go ahead Oh, sorry, I'm uncle. Um, so just go back to the two parallel lines because Swami is using um this word samana reka, and then later he's also saying sama duram duram. Yes, exactly. So, Equidistant. So, yes. Equidistant. So, I guess I I was thinking the reason why Swami said parallel lines is because nothing in in this whole nama rupa creation can ever touch or affect, um, Atman. 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 So um so what what exactly because I know we're not we said it's not really parallel so what exactly do those words do you think what do they mean samadhuram I think that's yeah. the question you know um so maybe I will go first uh, if uh, auntie you will like to say something or okay, auntie saying I will say okay so you I will go ahead. go ahead you go ahead so Kalyani the way I understand the the fact that it does not touch the Lord affect the Lord is that dhuram. you know he is not affected so that means it is it is apart from the real atman you know the all the changes which we see in creation is doesn't affect the lord so it is distant from the lord it's away from the lord so it's it stands apart i think that's the way in that qualitative sense it is meant is the way i understand uh, because he is distant to the lord means all these qualities are distant from the paramatman paramatman is not given to change uh, it is ever established ever the same um, it does not change whereas creation keeps on changing so those qualities are slightly distant from this uh, qualities of the lakshana of the atman that's the way i understand mm -hmm. so it is not from a physical perspective okay that duram is uh, i don't know whether auntie you have anything to add uh, Uh, i don't know whether i said it okay <laughs> yes i think you are correct 
samaduram means here it is not uh, to this line is distant from this line the distance between that will be maintained it's not that duram means actually actually what you said arun uh, satchit ananda is the swarupa lakshana of the lord nama rupa are changing always it is from, it is concerned with the worldly things so the, this uh, um, this nama rupa changes will not affect the uh, um, so origin, uh, our bhagwan satchit satchit ananda but but it keeps on this this changes will go on until it becomes one with the lord that's what i feel i don't know whether i'm correct or not thank you sai ram sai ram kalyan the question is avang mana goch manasa goch is beyond the mind and word but we can only attempt to sort of see it uh, and then just that uh, one paragraph before um there's a sentence where it says these dharmas were seen by the rishis and even if there is no end they have to exist a few people think that way um what is the line it is here um e reshulu kanugona dharma mulaku antam ah next sajeev mai nilchi edi charitraka yugamunaku so so kajan the way i the i anti because my uh-huh. understanding is even though we say there is no end even if the rishis have not seen it or whatever there must it must be exist. the end must be there oh, okay i think that's uh, meaning kalyani uh-huh. so people can say that you know people will say even if the, you know it's like you know you and i think the world is eternal we may not know but there may must be an end to this world you know i think that's the sense mm. Can I read that Telugu? Yes, please, Aunty. E Rushulu, Kanugonna Dharma Mulaku, Antamu Leka Poyinanu. Even if, even, even the, the way, Dharmas which the Rishis have seen, even if there's no end for them. Adi undi tira valayananu kada? Shouldn't there definitely be an, it, it shouldn't there, it be there definitely. Ani konda tira. people may think like that so what swami is saying is people think everything in this world has to come to an end even if you know even if if the rishis feel that way shouldn't there be an end and so this this is the thinking of some people uh, oh think that they are thinking that the dharmas even have to end exactly oh, okay but they are wrong is yes that's yeah. so that's why swami you see in this pura paksha <laughs> so, so in, when you establish something you had to uh, mention all the doubts potential doubts people can have and then you had to give an answer to them and uh, which is what swami is doing here yeah. so that uh, we we have a clear understanding of the uh, concept i think that's the reason that statement is made i hope that's okay, okay because after that i think swami is uh, anti the next statement is uh, sai ram can we say that abhyaktam until abhyaktam becomes vyaktam unmanifest becomes manifest uh, that doesn't mean that the, it, it did not exist before yes that it doesn't mean it did not ex- it existed for a time it was abhyakta then so it even when vyaktam ends also abhyaktam is still there still abhyaktam is even still. if it is not there Yes. because abhyaktam will never end never never yeah so you want that... to read the next sentence so... yes anti ee rishulu kanugonna so ani kondaru talanja vachunu some people can think so srishti adyanta rahitam ani veda veda siddhantamu so but the vedas the philosophy of the vedas is that the creation is uh, there's no end or beginning for that ఈవెన్ దో సమ్ పీపుల్ కెన్ థింక్ ద వేదాస్ డిక్లేర్ దిస్ 
and so on. You know, that's a Shabda Pramanam. See, because Swami is again going back to the previous statement. You know, there are three Pramanas which uh, declare and that's what all of our, our beliefs and are based on. So Swami is again quoting the Vedas uh, as the proof for people uh, who believe in the Vedas. Run with me. See, that's why, and as Auntie mentioned, uh, avyakta. So, in the last sentence in that paragraph says, Athani Shakti Avyaktamo. That means the real power of the Lord is avyakta, unmanifest. So, that unmanifest will always remain, and no one will know whether it exists or not. Because we only measure everything by the manifest, what we can see and say, oh, it has come to an end. But what Swami says is, Avyakta is always there. Only something which comes into being can go away. And Avyakta can never go away. And I think that's a statement at the end. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. And so this paragraph, it was talking about the dharmas of the loka, right? Like the world, the dharmas that, uh, the rules that the world follows? No, it is like atma dharma. Okay. It, it, but this is subsumed in that. You know, the loka dharma is part of it. A, oh. min, a minute part of it, but the dharma which Vedas are talking about is including the avyakta. Hmm. The atma. Sairam, brother, didn't we study that um, the, the destruction and creation um, is taking place continuously, but we see sometimes one side of the destructions only, but other side the creation is taking place all the time. Yeah. So it's a continuous thing, and we haven't unmanifested uh, the three-fourth. We said only quarter of it is one the creation. Scene. One yes. fourth is in three fourth is yeah. even within one fourth also one side only we know we think is destruction as done kind of but the other side creation taking place we don't know right we don't pay, pay attention see Brahma yes. will be jobless yes <laughs> he, has yeah. he has a job continuously created continuous. okay yeah. that's why Swami has you said Karya Shiludu the Brahman is always busy <laughs> is ceaselessly is creating. Okay, so. Yes, Aunty Sakya. Uh, because you mentioned about Brahma, I have a question. Uh, Prusha Suktam, we, we say that Virad, from Virad, uh, all the creation took place. From Vishnu, Virad, 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 and uh, uh, the, all creation took place. At that time, what did Brahma do? Brahma also was created by Virat. So the it's okay. So we are going to Purusha Suktam. It's a bit out of syllabus, but anyway, I will we post the questions, so I'll answer. Um others have something people can add. See the understanding says auntie, yeah. Purusha Suktam is not again a, not a linear concept. The Vishwa Virat Purusha exists. There are Brahmas created, and Brahma does his work, and Brahma is finished. Goes away. Uh -huh. See, Swami says. Actually, the Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are within each of us. They really? are present in each of us. Okay, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, when each of us is born, there is a Brahma born along with us. The mm -hmm. Brahma, in a microcosmic level, it's there. Mm -hmm. The aspect of Brahman is in each person also. Aspect of Shiva is also in each person. So, everything in this world is present. That so it is a function, it's not a person. You know, I think that's where we are going into problem. Brahma, Thank you. you know, Shiv, Vishnu lied down, there was a lotus which came and then suddenly Brahma appeared. <laughs> so, see, these are Puranic descriptions. So we think one day it must have happened, you know, but uh, every time it is happening. Okay. So, every, so it's an eternal function. When Purusha Suktam is not a historical event. Uh, it is a continuous process. Continuous process. Thank you. 
Thank you, brother, for mentioning that, that everything is within us. Thank you. I was, thank and you. Heart, and heart tastes you, Lord Shiva. Ah, see, you, you know already. <laughs> Swami talks about mind is Vishnu. Mind like, is Vishnu. Ah, speech is Brahma. What is Brahma? Speech. Speech, yeah. yeah. That's because why Saraswati, Saraswati, yeah, Saraswati. Saraswati. Yeah. Ah, yeah, Saraswati. yeah. See, so Thank I... <laughs> So each of us is endowed with that. Through us, he does his job. You know, so he's not a person sitting somewhere, some remote place with some uh, beard and all that, you know, it's not there. Like that. that is a problem. We... <laughs> okay, so, but it's okay. I think, I think Puranas tell the story so that we understand the concept. But ultimately, one has to... Uh, Go to the Smriti and Smriti and then Shruti to really understand what the truth is. Yeah, Shruti. Initially, the in, some of these concepts are introduced at a preliminary stage, but we have to keep on studying. And uh, you know, we cannot. It's like uh, saying the Santa Claus came down the chimney, but it is real for a child. But as an adult, we understand what it means, what's the concept and so on. And so it's not too different. Um, the Puranas, that's all they're attempting to do, to introduce concepts. But along with that, they give us enough information to do sadhana. So that sadhana purifies us and we get to a point where we can understand and we grow. Uh, that's all I can say. So I'll stop. Thank you. Saira. Just before we move on from the slide, that so just a few sentences before that appear, uh, sentence we read, it says, Atale paramartha loka dharma mulu kuda shashvata mulu. So it, what is that? Is that referring to also like the, the laws that govern the world, the physical world? Paramartha dharma. You know, so that's I said, paramartha dharma is Swami is referring to. That means the supreme dharma. See, the Loka Dharma also is prone to change to some extent. From time to time, it will change. Yuga to Yuga also. Yuga Dharma also can be different. A person's Dharma as a Brahmachari will be different from a Grihastha. So, th though these Dharmas are eternal, the applicability will change according to time. But Paramartha Dharma is constant at all times forever. So, that's why in Dharma Vaini, Swami starts with Atma Dharma. He says that is the foundation. That foundation is always there. So everything should be based on that foundation. So, But all dharmas are subservient to that supreme dharma. That's why Swami says Sarva Dharma and Parityajya Mahamekam Sharadam, which we discussed quite a bit. So all these for the world dharmas are prone to change. But that aham, the dharma of the Atman does not change. So Swami Krishna is telling, take refuge in that, that Atma Dharma. Uh, when you, because the other dharmas are prone to some change, depending on time, circumstances, and so on. That's my understanding. I will stop here. Anyone else you would like to add? Auntie, is there something you would like to clarify? What? No, okay. Auntie. Brother, uh, uh, when Krishna says you take refuge in Atma Dharma means, Take the refuge in Lord again, right? Exactly. Am I right? Yes, yes. thanks. Sorry. Identify yourself as divine and be merged yes. with me. That's what his Krishna is telling. Take refuge in me means merge with me. Yes, thank merge you. In me. Merge in me. Merge in me. Atma, the Atma Dharma is all comprising. Every Dharma, lo, Loka Dharma, Samaja Dharma, and then uh, stages of our uh, Grahastha, Brahmasriya, all these dharmas come under one dharma, that's Atma Dharma. Swami very beautifully explained in the last uh, Gita Vahini uh, chapter, you know, we, we studied Sarva Dharma and Padithya Mame Kam Sharanam Raja. So a lot of discussion also we had. I think we should be very clear about that. Only Atma Dharma, come and take refuge in me. Everything will always, I will take care of you. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. I hope we didn't yeah, sorry, think... Uncle, because the, the, the translation I've written down is in the same way the supreme dharmas of the world are also permanent. Is that is that correct? Or... What is it? 
So, Aunty, <laughs> we'll read the Telugu once, Aunty, because Kalyan is just taking uh, she, The first sentence was Atle Paramartha Loka Dharmamulu Kuda Shashwatamulu. Yes. That we read. E Rahasyamunu. So, so, okay. So, okay. So, Kalyani, so at that center she's asking, Aunty. She's asking. Kal Kalyani, Atle, in the same way, Paramartha, the supreme, okay, Loka Dharmamulu. So, uh -huh. the supreme Loka Dharmas. So that, you know, Paramartha Loka Dharma, not other Loka Dharma. So any Loka Dharma, which is subservient to the Paramartha, or which will take you to that Paramartha, you know, it elevate you to that point, they are permanent. So, you know, even if you take, you know, householder, householder has to do very many things. But one of the Dharma of a householder is to attain the Lord. He should do sandhya, you know, he should identify when he does his sandhya that he is divine, all that. So that is what I would call paramartha loka dharma. Even though it's a loka dharma, it's, it's paramartha, it's pointing towards the highest. So those are permanent. But then other things which one but does in the world as a householder, which are related to world, not necessarily related to the paramartha. So I think that's the way I understand. I may be wrong. But I hope that clarifies. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. So, so any dharma you're doing, if you're doing it with the paramartha in view, ah, then... ah, ah, exactly. Okay. They are permanent because their goal is permanent. Okay, so so I... okay, I think okay. <laughs> I think we have sort of exhausted this topic, so we can. Okay, Sairam brother, yes, Sairam brother. Just add to the point about the Dharma, even Gita Bhavani, Lord Krishna said, Dharma never uh, destroyed. It may go down. That's the time the avatars come to establish that again. It's not completely go down. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, the same thought has been mentioned here also, brother. Swami says, before man came to know of Dharma, also Dharma existed. Even right. when man forgets also, it will exist. Yeah. It will exist forever. That statement is here also. Thank you. So, sisters, maybe we'll read the next paragraph. Yeah. Okay. The conceptions of the Supreme Goal as laid down in Judaism, Christianity, and Zoroastrianism, oh. which ever endeavored to subsume into their categories the Indian Bharatiya concept and transfuse is as part of themselves. But the Indian concept did not accept an alien status in its own birthplace. On the other hand, it clarified for those religions themselves their own concept of the ultimate, emphasized the unity of all viewpoints and established cordially on the basis of the absence of difference. While the stream of knowledge regarding the supreme goal discovered by the Indian saints flowed on, the concepts of the other faiths remained as pools beside it. In India itself, many sects were born like mushrooms from out of the main faith. They tried to pluck by the roots or to cause mortal damage to the basic concept of Hinduism regarding the reality, the Supreme. But as in a terrific quack of land, the waters of the sea recede only to return with thousandfold furry, roaring back upon the shore, it had seemed to quit the stream of Indian Bhartiya wisdom was restored to its pristine glory when it rose above the confusions and conflicts of history. When the agitation subsided, it attracted the varied sects that distract the mind of people and merged them into its expansive form. The Atma principle of the Indians is all embracing, all revealing, all explaining and all powerful. Thank you, Nirmata. Maybe we'll read the Telugu. I think uh, I, I read it. We, we read, read some part of it, Randy, but uh, yeah, some let more... me, let me, let me Not the second paragraph, maybe. The concept yes. of the supreme goal. Yes. Uh, uh, 
So I'll read that paragraph again. Bharati Yula Paramartamo Atyanta Viswata Rupa Mainadi. The the thought the supreme goal of the Bharatiyas is very expansive. Mahonata Gagana Margamana Kegisi Achata Swechara Viharin Chichunadi. It has risen to the skies and there it moves about freely, independently. This got established prehistorically. There were many setbacks for this. It overcame all the setbacks and even today it remains alive. This is a proof of its innate strength. Madhya Madhya Yudhiyu, Christava, Zurashtriyan, Madalog, Matamala, Paramartamalo, Tanalo, Vilina, Monarchukonatako, Prayantin Chinanu. In the middle, at times, in the middle times, um, the Jewish, Christian, and Zoroastrian, etc., other and other religions. The, they try to own or uh, take take over the supreme goal of the Parama Bharatiya tradition. Sarva Vijaya Shila Yagui Bharatiya Paramartha Vahini. The 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 flow, the river of this Bharatiya Supreme Goal, which is of uh, which has many victories. Tana Janma Bom Minundi Verukaka. Not being uprooted from its birthplace. For the above religious uh, supreme goals were taught the appropriate, the right, correct meaning. To est uh, declare the oneness of all of them. It it firmly established the equality of all. In this world, so in this country, all the religions. They are near the uh, river of the supreme uh, river of Bharatiya Supreme Goal. Chalamala vale nilisi poino. Chalamala. They are like small pools. They remained as pools beside this the river of Bharatiya, uh, Supreme Goal River. Even in the, the country of Bharat, there were so many belief systems and branches uh, yeah. one, one beyond the other. One behind the other. One behind the other. They are like um, uh, mushrooms. Like mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like they are they are mushrooms yeah. which were born there. Veda Pratipadita Magu Bharati Paramartha Matamunu. The supreme uh, padi pratipadtama at least approved. Anala pratipadtama. Okay, approved supreme goal of the Bharatiyas and the and the belief. Namula gramuga. Namula. So uprooted, you know, to to uproot the religion of the Bharatiyas. Uru the loginchi. I mean, they attempted to, I think, Urutal. Urutal, uh, uh, thousand four in Hinduism regarding as in terrific quake of land. Quake Urutal? Pula Droya Chochinavi. They wanted to finish it off. Yeah. Urutal uh, Kinchi. Urutal, it shook, it shook the whole. Yeah, Ruth, okay. Urutalo. Kula Droyante Utkanta Utkanta 
ಉರ್ರೂತ ಉರ್ರೂತ ತೆಲುಂಗಲೆ ಉರ್ರೂತ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಪ್ರಳಯ ಕಾಲ ಮಗು ಭೂಕಂಪ ಸಮುದ್ರ ತೀರ ಜಲಮು ಕೊಂತ ತಡುಪು ವೆನಕಕ್ಕೂ ಮರಳಿಪೋಯನು ದಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಓಷನ್ ಈವನ್ ದೋ ದೇ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಅವೇ ತದುಪರಿ ತೊಳ್ಳಿಂಟಿ ಕನ್ನ after that they will tollinti kanna means and model model better than before better than before oh yeah tollinti kanna sahasra gunadika balamuto with thousands of you know gunadika means increase in that characteristic marla moharinchi again it will come and uh, ಸ್ವಾಮಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ tsunami wave tsunami wave like a tsunami it actually comes and o- over you know covers the entire shore in the same way ee bharatiya ee bharatiya paramartha vahini allah allah kallola okinta anagina pidapa so in the same way the bharatiya river uh, it basically um, completely submerged all these uh, upheavals upheavals koncham anagin tappidaka when upheaval is little settled down settled down okay para marala vidjuminchi again it becomes double uh, thousand fold it becomes thousand back ee vibhinna matakshakam lantintiki tana mahattara swarupam loniki aakarshinchukonenu it it basically attracts within uh, itself basically it subsumes all these thoughts processes which try to uproot and get rid of it it comes back with uh, renewed vigor yeah renewed vigor renewed vigor it takes mm-hmm. over that's what swami is itti sarvagnamaina sarva shaktimantamaina atma tattvamunu paramartha sthiti ni peminchute atanini aaradhinchuta this all knowing knowledge which is all powerful and it, which is the essence of the atmic principle which is supreme state to love that to to ad- adore that is the way to worship that sari aunty we are going to the next okay. no next that sentence is not here yeah. okay so okay so we'll stop it so sorry the principle of indians is all embracing all revealing all explaining all perfect that that it stops okay so fine oh we are so we covered that okay um so i will stop here it's 424 but anyone has any initial thoughts so so swami is talking about actually now you know about religions what they t- did try to do to the bharatiya culture see some of these problems even exist today also there are all sorts of thoughts and belief systems we are mushrooming even today which are against the vedas what the vedas have taught also and so i will stop here if anyone has something to share please yes brother tasu yes sir i am brother so nowadays the most of the other religion are uh, just throwing some uh, uh, thoughts from the you know people who doesn't know the indusian we are believing different forms and and uh, uh, they are sinners uh, the people are sinners 
and once you achieve the goal, you may go to heaven. And you are praying the form. And this kind of uh, uh, knowledge, we are not passing to the Hindus. That's what the people are changing their religion to. And, uh, and uh, uh, these are the uh, issues uh, we're having. How we can uh, teach the people. Thank okay. you. Okay, so brother has asked a question. What can we do? Educate people is what he's telling. Um, so anyone who has any thoughts, please? Maybe I will uh, go, no one, is, I think there's a comment from someone. Yes, sir. Yes, Auntie Saku. Simple. Be a role model. Follow all what Baba has taught. <laughs> yes, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Anyone else? Add to that Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavan. Maybe you have four minutes. So I will just say some things and maybe we can continue this discussion. Um, see, the thing is, I think the fundamental problem is we don't know our own. We say we are Hindus. How much? How many of us know anything about Hinduism? Have we at least studied one text end to end? You know, the problem is we are all interested in helping the world. But I think we have to help ourselves first. So, you know, for example, if you take, if somebody asks, what are your texts? We'll say Vedas. What do you know Vedas mean? They will say, we know how to chant Veda. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, we will say, oh, Bhagavad Gita, how many of us have read end to end, every sloka have we studied? One text, you know, in our one lifetime, even if we read one text, at least we would have learned a little bit. But the problem is, uh, we don't uh, make that effort. That's why Swami is teaching all this. Uh, so, you know, uh, so we have to take in the, put in the time uh, and study. Even what Swami has taught also, People don't know. You know, we don't make efforts. You know, how many Vahinis Sw Swami has spent years writing, but how many of us have spent any amount of time uh, to even study them? You know, we may just quote some quotations. Uh, so it's like that, I would say. Uh, so I think that's the problem. If we can uh, study, is, we have to become good students and study, and then maybe. Uh, we, if we help ourselves, as Auntie Sakku said, you know, we be a role model at that point in time. It will help others because if we show them how we are studying, others may study or may not study. But at least we have done our part. I would say. Yes, Sister Aruna, please go ahead. Sairam, brother, at this time, at this um, time, I reminded about the, how Swami says, uh, if we are a uh, Christian, be a good Christian and all. That also we have to, um, I think uh, in the um, next uh, study circle discussion, we can, can we understand from that point of view too, what is Swami is trying to tell these uh, mushrooming things. So, <laughs> because, <laughs> so it will help us to understand more about this religion and what Swami is trying to say too. Thank yes, you. Yes, sister. You know, that will be Thank the discussion. You. It, uh, it will be a big discussion next week, hopefully. Uh, yes. We can post. It's 4.29, so we'll close the session today. Because once we open up the discussion, it's uh, not going to end. So, it's okay. Sairam, everyone. We'll close with Samastha Loka. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam. Sairam, thank you. Sairam. Thank you, Sairam.